I'm Mark Schofield, and welcome to another installment of First Sound here at Inside the Pylon. Today I'm going to continue the interception series and examine Josh Rosen's 10 interceptions from 2017. I'd invite you to take a look at some of the other installments of this series. I looked at Sam Darnold's 12 interceptions, Baker Mayfield's 5, and Lamar Jackson's 6 interceptions from this season. I'm going to get to the other quarterbacks in this class, such as Mason Rudolph, Josh Allen, as we get through the draft process. Now, I'd invite people to take a look at last year. The first time I did something like this was with Deshaun Watson and his 17 interceptions in the 2016 college season. A lot of people have asked me on Twitter or elsewhere, you know, why do you take the time to go through interceptions? What What can we really learn from those? And the reason why I first did this with Deshaun Watson was people looked at his 17 interceptions. They looked at that number and assumed that there were a lot of mistakes from him, that he was turnover prone, that perhaps he wasn't worth a first round draft pick. So I wanted to find out for myself if that was the case. And we did learn some things about Watson. And I think when you look at mistakes, look at interceptions, you'll find a couple of things regardless of quarterback. One, not all interceptions are equal. Two, not all interceptions are even on the quarterback himself. Three, when the interceptions are on the quarterback, can we learn something from that? Are there mistakes that are repeated? Or does the quarterback make a variety of mistakes that lead to turnovers that can tell you something else about the player? And so I think it's a worthwhile use of time to go through these and try to get into their heads, try to find out what's behind these mistakes, what's behind these interceptions, and apply that to our own evaluations, to your own evaluations, is just one more piece of the puzzle we're trying to put together before the draft. We're going to start with two plays against Memphis. This first play, start looking at the situation. UCLA down three midway through the third quarter. Third and 19 near midfield. And I point that out because context matters. In this situation, you're down three. You don't want to make a bad mistake here you're almost in sort of no man's land maybe you can anticipate going forward on fourth down so you don't want to do anything too 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 silly but they do call a vertical pass in concept vertical route from y receiver up here to the right also runs a vertical route we'll see vertical route that bends to the outside deep crosser this way running back will sit down over the middle Memphis, they show four here up front. This guy comes down, then retreats. This guy drops as well. Three-man rush. Rosen uses a bit of a play-action fake. But with a three-man rush, he'll have some time to let this develop. Might be some tough tough throw-in lands because they're dropping eight. But, but the protection is good. Nice solid pocket here. Rosen buys time, and he climbs. I'm fully on board so far. Now he gets to the edge. And let's remember here, it's 30-19. There's some grass here. You can make an argument. Okay, he can run this. We'll play it out here. But he doesn't run it. Here we see that crossing route come over. This is open. Now I'd say, okay, let's throw this. You'll get it back towards the original line of scrimmage. It'll be 4th and 10 at the 40. Maybe you punt, maybe you go, but you've got 4th down and you've still got possession. Or you could run it. Both of those are okay options. I understand the aggressive nature here to try to make a play, but there's a play right in front of you. There are two plays in front of you. But we're going to see one of the classic blunders. What are the other classic blunders? Well, don't start a land war in Asia. Never go in against a Sicilian when death is on the line. And never throw across your body over the middle late in a play. Those are your classic blunders. Here's your classic blunder. And this one goes the distance we'll see it now from the overhead camera there's the verticals here comes that crossing route over the field running back is the guy he eventually throws to he sits here and then sort of works with the quarterback in a scramble drill situation as he breaks the pocket this again is open and he's got room to run You might have to put a move on this defender, but there's a chance to pick up a play here. If you want to be super conservative, Josh, you can run this. 
here's the route here. That's who he eventually throws to. By sort of waiting here, taking that extra second, it allows these two guys to converge on this. This route's still open now. Throwing that's a better choice. Run it, it's a better choice. Throwing late across the middle, your classic blunder. Next interception is again against Memphis. I want to rewind this back just one second. We'll see a safety blitz right here. Safety starts here, cheats down, and then he comes. Gives you one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. There's some route miscommunication here. Rosen's going to throw this quick because this is not blocked. Assuming this guy's going to sit down. But he stays vertical. Now this is a question of what are the reads for the receiver and the quarterback against this blitz? Because this is something I saw with Watson last year, this sort of weak side blitz. Now, if it's, the, if it's the corner who comes, then everybody should really be on the same page. If you're the receiver, that corner comes, you sit down right here. You replace the blitz with the ball. That's pretty easy and straightforward. Now it's a safety. Are the reads the same? That's something that's sitting here right now, sipping coffee and talking to you nice folks about this play, that I don't know. Traditionally, in the offense I ran in college, if we saw something like this, you stay with the route. You stay with the route concept. Because you're still seeing coverage here, so he's going to stay vertical and try to beat this guy. You'll have to throw it quick, but you got to get it out here. Now, the reads might be different. It might be the same sort of concept where if you get that blitz from the safety, you still sit down here, make yourself available so the quarterback can get it out. And since that's where Rosen throws, that's kind of where I'm going to lean on this play. That there was miscommunication. This receiver should have sat down. And that's where the ball would have been thrown. But let's not forget the situation. This play comes third and 10, seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. You're in the red zone. You're down by three. You, if you're going to throw this, Josh, you need to be 100% sure everybody is on the same page. Otherwise, throw it away or eat it because you're in field goal range. Take three points, 48-48. Instead, you're not sure, and it ends up as an interception. Here's another look at it. Again, pressure can't get enough into it. Underthrown. Interception. Now we're going to look at this play against Stanford. It's the first of two interceptions. Tie game early, and this one I'm not putting on the quarterback. Good drop. Nice, clean, crisp mechanics. Puts this where it's caught. Could be caught. Tipped and intercepted. I'm not really going to ding Rosen on this one. That's a catchable ball. I mean... Is it the perfect throw? No, but given the situation and the context and where the defender is and the leverage and everything, that's probably the best place to put it. Bobbled and intercepted. Next interception against Stanford comes late in the game. Under five minutes to go. You're down 17. Trying to make something happen. Another route miscommunication, I believe. Unsettled here in the pocket. He's sliding. Sort of makes this throw not fully stepping into it. Might like to see him step into it more. This is a pretty clean pocket. But throws it to nobody. He's expecting that receiver on the outside to stay vertical and he doesn't. I don't know if it's a conversion situation or if it's just he ran the wrong route. But there's nobody there. Next pick. UCLA's got a 21-17 lead against Colorado. First and 10 right near midfield. Five minutes and change left in the third quarter. Dialing up the play-action shot play. Vertical rattle on the boundary. Play-action with a bit of a roll. This is the route you want to throw. Now, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And Mr. Man of the Hour, the safety. He is shaded towards the route you want to throw. You need to make sure this is man free, cover one, whatever you want to call it. Make sure he either bites on the run, coming downhill, or you move him or freeze him with your eyes before you throw this. Because you use motion, you saw the safety retreat a little bit. Now it's a three by one. You hope that the alignment and what you do as a quarterback holds him in the middle of the field. There's the fake coming out of it. His head never moves from that route. Never moves from it. He doesn't see that safety. He's not sure. From looking at it right now, I can't tell if he knows where that safety is. But that's what he needs to know. Because here we go. Again, looking at it again. Watch Rosen's helmet. Watch everything. Everything is towards that boundary receiver. You can't assume that the run fake, the three by one, is going to move that guy. He studied film all week too. He's made it to the Pac-12. He's a free safety in the Pac-12. He's one of the 1% of kids that make it to college football. So he's going to be a player too. You can't just assume that he's going to bite for every bite on everything you guys did up front. You got to move him a little bit. It just takes a second as you come out of this right here. I know you want to pick him up, then come back for a split second. You got to come back at some point and make sure. Now the other thing with this pass. There's an argument I guess you could make if he puts it more downfield. Maybe he doesn't get under it. I wouldn't buy that one too much, but he does leave the throw inside. You see the receiver. He's up the field here, up the boundary. Now he has to try to work back, and that allows the safety to get in in front of this. Manipulation, using your eyes, looking this guy, freezing him off, and then a better placed ball. Those are all things we're looking for on this play that don't happen. And it goes the other way. Three interceptions against Arizona. And stop me if you've heard this before. Smash concept. I'm like Gruden with Spider Banana. You know, that's the play that everybody talks about with Gruden. Smash concept is, you know, the one I always get excited to talk about, which is, now that I've said that out loud, almost pathetic. But anyway, smash concept. Hitch. Corner, throw the corner. If he drops, throw the hitch. If he squats, throw the corner. I've said it before. I'm sure I'll say it again. Another blitz here from the safety. Process will get sped up again due to the blitz, due to interior pressure. But here's the route concept coming together. Corner squats, pretty. I'd say he squats here. Now you've got man coverage. You've got the corner route. Receiver has a bit of inside leverage. It looks good. Pressure into him. Can't really step into this throw. See, he's got guy in his face. Can't really step into this throw. Doesn't get a ton on it. Floats a bit, and that corner peels off. You know, this is one of those where it's hard to really say he should have thrown this because... You know, when you look at when he decides right here, this is where he decides to throw it. This looks open. You know, you've got to make sure you can get it back here so the guy can't come off late and make the play on the ball. But this looks fairly open. Now, it is first and goal. It's early in the game. Maybe you want to play more conservative. But this is a long throw. If he makes this throw here, maybe this guy jumps in and goes the other way for six. So I think he made the right decision here. Some may disagree, and that's fine. But from my view of this, I think he made the right decision. I think the bigger issue here, he can't step into it. So the ball floats a bit. And that gives him time to come off and get it. That's my read of it. You might disagree, and that's okay too. So he just kind of floats it out there and gives him time to get it. 
See, there's still room back here. If he puts it back here, if he gets more on the ball, I think this is a play that gets completed for six. But life goes on. Life goes on here. Next play, second of the three interceptions against Arizona. This one, NFL throw time. If you wanted to take a look at Josh Rosen throwing that boundary route from one hash mark to the opposite sideline, here's your chance. Play action, deep boundary route up here, right hash mark towards left sideline. Again, before we get into everything else, Rosen's footwork, mechanics, you've probably heard this, pretty crisp, pretty clean. I don't have any con real concerns there. On this play, throwing this route, time and anticipation and ball placement are important. The timing and the anticipation are pretty good. He gets this out. We'll get another view of it in a second. But he gets this out on time in the structure of the play. It's timed up very well. Comes out, hitch, gather, throw, ball is out. Let's look at that again because it's nerdy quarterback stuff. Fake, hit, gather, throw. It's timed up, synced up extremely well. The issue is the placement more than anything. He leaves this throw too far to the inside. As we'll see in a second, this corner is playing zone coverage. He's reading Rosen's eyes all the way. So he gets a chance to break on this. Since the timing of it is pretty good, since it it's anticipated pretty well, he doesn't get a great break on it. But because it's left towards the inside of the field, he's able to get under it. And he takes it the other way for six. Now you might ask, is it an arm strength issue? I don't think it is. Again, it's a long throw. I'm going to see the boundary route up here. You know, I, I'm not as concerned with arm strength as I am on this throw. Because look, it's timed up really well. The ball's out. Ball's basically out of his hand. There's the route. Break into the outside. You've got the cushion you want. If you put this throw here, that's going to be a problem. But if you get it more towards the boundary out here, that's going to allow the receiver to at least have his body between defender and the ball. You know, here it's going to be tougher for that receiver to start going this way and then break it up. See, it's the placement to the inside more than anything that causes this turnover. Finally, double slant, tosser, topper, whatever you want to call it. Slant route here. Deeper slant, which is why I call it topper. That's what the Patriots call it in their playbook. We've talked about assuming before. Again, same thing. Don't assume. Rosen tries to get a little bit cute here. He'll take the snap. Stare right at the linebackers here to try to hold them. Because if he look, if you look outside right now, he's got the look he wants. Off coverage. This guy has leverage. This guy has leverage. Both of these routes will be open provided this guy gets frozen. So that's what Rosen does. Look at his eyes. He's looking right here. He's trying to draw these three guys to this short little route here. And that will open up slant one and slant two. But he just assumes that this guy is going to get too excited and jump this. But this guy doesn't. Again, the other guys, are, you know, they're good too. He passes this off. Now Rosen flashes outside and thinks, I've got this throw, right? I've frozen these guys. I've done everything I need to do. Well, not exactly. Because this guy's getting under it. And if you look outside, by the way, this one's wide open. No, but that's the issue on this play. From the snap, eyes in the middle of the field, then just assumes that's going to be open. You know, if you're going to try to get cute like that, look it off, look it off, look it off, and then immediately throw, you got to be 100% sure. You know, because that's what can happen. What we saw right there is what can happen if you're not 100% sure. And it also stings to see this guy wide open. Here's another look at it. That's the middle linebacker. This is the guy who makes the play. See Rosen looking right here. Looking at the linebackers, trying to freeze them, and then immediately snaps and fires. And I sort of like the thought process. He's trying to manipulate those guys, 
but you gotta be sure. All right. Interception number nine, Arizona State. Stick concept. Something we see every NFL game at least once. Why stick? Come here, and you've got options. You see zone, you squat. You see man, run from it. Why stick? The issue here becomes quarterback, tight end need to be on the same page. Because here, here's the point. How are you reading this? Tight end thinks it's zone. He throttles down. Rosen looks, thinks it's man, expects him to go. Passes towards the boundary where Rosen anticipates the wide, the wide to go to. And it looks off the target and it's intercepted. You know, this is, this is one of those things where you've all got to be on the same page. We've seen some miscommunication plays before. This is sort of another one. Now, looking at it at this angle, you know, I'm almost with Rosen. You know, this looks like man. You know, in the other angle, it looked where this guy was more off coverage. You could understand why he would throttle down. So maybe it's just a situation where you can understand why this guy did what he did. You can understand why Rosen makes the throw he does. But the pass is to the outside. Rosen's expecting him to go. And if he takes a couple more steps, this throw, it's going to be a tiny bit high, but it'll be more on his frame. Since he sort of throttles down, it's now to the boundary. It gets tipped and intercepted. Why stick? Last interception. Back to the concept of manipulation here. Seven-point game against your crosstown rival. You're in the red zone. 10.43 10.43 left, third quarter, third and 12. Two high safety look. Here's the other safety. Here's one safety. The other safety sort of down this way, just off the field of vision here. Cross and route. Vertical along the outside. This is the vertical that he tries to throw up this way. What you need to do, if you're going to throw the route in blue, make sure This safety, the one we can't see, comes across to create that room for this. Otherwise, he's going to be just right in the throwing lane. This bender here, it's going to draw this safety, sure. But you want to try to get this guy to move. Otherwise, that safety is going to squat right on the route. See? Rosen looks right first. Now he's looking towards the middle of the field. He's trying to get those guys to move to that bender. Flashes the eyes outside, but there he is. We'll get a better view of this in a second from the end zone camera. There's the one safety. Here's the other. This is going to be that sort of bender route. The route now will be red. It's the one that he throws. See, he's opening towards this side of the field. He's trying to freeze the safeties. But this guy doesn't get moved enough. Does a good job of sort of staying home. And this is when he decides to pull the trigger. There's that safety that makes the play. Here's the guy he's throwing to. That's a really tough throwing lane. You know, you, that's you know that's one of those perfect throws I've talked about with guys like Baker Mayfield where. You know, if you want to make that throw, you it's a tough one. By not moving this guy enough, you've made this throwing lane smaller than it should be. You know, as it comes through, he gets him a couple of steps, but still. Defender, defender, underneath defender, that's a tough ask. You know, looking at it now, again, sitting here sipping coffee, maybe you just take the check down here. I know you want to be aggressive. You'd like to see quarterbacks being aggressive. This is probably an overly aggressive decision, something we saw on the first play, an overly aggressive decision. Maybe this is a situation where you just you check it down, you take the three points, it's early enough in the game where that is probably the smarter decision, especially since this guy hasn't been moved enough. 
But those are Josh Rosen's 10 interceptions. You know, some of the themes that we covered, manipulation with the eyes, making sure you're not assuming that you've moved guys well enough, knowing, you know, when you need to freeze that free safety, like that interception against Colorado. There are some miscommunication errors, you know, whether it's from Rosen, whether it's from his receivers. Hard to tell without knowing the actual play call, you know. But I, I think we've got some educated guesses there as well. There was, you know, a drop against Stanford. You know, the smash concept where he was pressured. You know, I don't see a ton of repeated mistakes. If I, did, if I were to say that there's one or two, maybe it's using his eyes better. Making sure of throwing lands before he pulls the trigger. And that might be a process of, look, if he's facing a lot of pressure, he doesn't feel like he has a lot of time to do these things. He rushes things. You know, that's something to watch with Rosen going forward. You know, can he settle in and use his eyes better? Avoid assuming coverages, assuming looks from defenders. But that's my read of these 10. Maybe you feel differently on one or all of them. Maybe you know. Either way, now that's been my look at Josh Rosen's 10 interceptions here. I'm Like I said, I'm going to get through some of the other guys, hopefully all the other guys, as we get closer to draft season. You can check out the other ones, Lamar Jackson, Baker Mayfield, Sam Donald, those are up now. I'll be getting to more as the draft process goes along. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If not, I tried. Until the next episode of First Sound, thanks for watching.